Guys, uh, we are here for part two and with Melanie Reese, and we're talking about, we were talking about fight or flight, and she was just describing how if you started life in a fight or flight experience, and I would try to describe with patients when they come in, when they're in fight or flight, it basically means what it says. It means that you are in a constant amount of fight or flight. Sometimes I have patients that come in, and guys, we have um, chemistry within our brains, when we get triggered by stress or react, it can cause a chemical reaction that travels down through the brain, through the glands, basically goes into our thyroid. Our thyroid tells our bodies to, let's create energy to fight this or run from it. Um, my mom is a chronic worrier. Um, my dad had a approval issue, so I worry about approval. That's mm -hmm. what I do. Um, thankfully, with therapy and uh, prayers and meditations, um, I've realized the amount of fight or flight and the fight or flight mechanism, they say, will swell up the brain stem at the very base of the skull, put a lot of pressure on the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve affects the heart, respiration, the digestion. All that to say, Mel was saying that if you already were in fight or flight mm -hmm. and you had traumas laid into the midbrain and you can get into chronic disease, when we see that, when you and I see that kind of disease uh, or any type of disease come in, what is your gradient, like with brain spotting, my is great. When people out there are experiencing traumas, what's going to happen? They're going to go, "Well, my my issue is so big, I know I'm going to have to have this many, you know, this many treatments." Maybe you do. How do you determine? Because you've seen really powerful results in just one visit. I mean, because brain spotting. I remember you telling me this. Brain spotting was like where you're at now. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and, and correct me, I'm just saying that EMDR is like a series, but your brain spotting just takes into account where you're at, and you can just see big changes because you're using certain directions. What are like your groundwork when people come? You're like, we're just going to fix what we find today. Is that how you go approach it, or how's? Well, you, um, I guess the way that EMDR is just created and used as a therapy is has those eight phases. Yeah. And so it's just a little bit more structured of mm -hmm. a way to go about doing kind of the same stuff. So you can get really big changes and results um, with EMDR too. Um, there's research that, um, I think it was Sandy Hook is where uh, brain spotters went mm -hmm. when that happened. Yeah. Um, and there was a little bit of research done with just CBT, EMDR, and brain spotting. Mm -hmm. So the, um, and they looked at it six months later. Yeah. And the CBT results, people went back down. Mm -hmm. um, EMDR stayed the same. So like once you process, you're good. Yeah. And, um, and then with brain spotting, they continued to get better. Wow. And it's, it facilitates your, even with EMDR, your brain processes between sessions. Really? Yeah. And so, but with brain spotting, it was actually created out of um, EMDR. It's mm -hmm. David Grant, who did natural flow EMDR. So with EMDR regularly, you typically, you're going faster. Well, he started doing it more slow. And he noticed, um, he was working with an athlete um, that was, it was an ice skater, mm -hmm. and so he noticed when he was doing that, he hit a spot, and their eyes twitched. And then they'd been working together for a long time, and as that started, all just a bunch of trauma just started flowing out. Like she started processing, and so he just naturally he just stayed in that one spot. Yeah. Um, and she she, it, she couldn't do it. It was either a, a triple loop or a double axle, one of those. Um, she'd been having trouble with it, and mm -hmm. after the brain spotting, she was able to. And so is that when you're talking, when we're just talking about fight or flight, and when the person goes into like that rigidity, is it like where you're trying to get the it's, body? You found the file. Ah. The file in the deep brain okay. where that trauma lays. So with, um, and I've done more training in brain spotting than I've done. I'm only level two in EMDR, but level three in brain spotting. And that, when you get into that, the deeper levels of it, you can, you learn how to work with sports performance. Um, with acting, performance anxieties, those kind of things, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. um, like if you're looking at someone with a sports injury, they can, if they have like, they get tackled or get hit really, really hard, mm -hmm. um, their body holds it. So they may not be anxious about that happening again. Yeah. They may or may not be, but their body like remembers that. And so when they get put in those situations again, it can, even if it's for a second, and sports people will know, you can't give up at all when you're trying to go forward, and your body naturally will go the uh, not go forward. It would ah. it hesitates a little bit, and you, we may not even recognize that it happened, yeah. but it can. Um, but then other trauma, like past trauma, 
can really show up in different ways that we're not realizing because um, it gives us those messages. And so that's kind of with when someone comes in with, like you said, trying to gauge what to look, you know, how are we going to go about doing this? Um, the EMDR protocol is going to be let's pinpoint very specific things, mm -hmm. let's figure out what the message is, and then let's process it. Yeah. Versus with brain spotting, it's it's more of a let's whatever feels big for you, what feels activating, what's the problem, and let's just go for it. Does it does it feel when you go forward like when they're telling you about their fight or fly, when they say what feels what you're feeling right now, do you believe or know that when they say that you know that all roads lead back, that like it'll all lead home to the, like that one main belief that they're living their life in? You, it, does it happen that way? Like, you know, when they say, what do I feel today? But you know it's going to point back to where the original traumas come in. I mean, because I do really link the intakes and get to know kind of all of the things around that have gone into that person sitting across from me. Mm -hmm. um, you know a lot of their stories, so I kind of, you know, you try not to make, like, well, just because I've had a client that's done this before doesn't mean that's going to be this person's experience, yeah. but, so you have to balance that, but when someone comes in and they're telling me all these health problems that are going on, or they think going to doctors all the time, and just thing after thing, it's like their body's screaming at them, and mm. that's, um, to me, I'm like, well, that makes total sense yeah. when I find out your history, and then you tell me all this is going on. Because your body, if you, if you have a history of not, it's the shoving down of things and ignoring it that call, it takes more energy than it does to let it process. But that not trying to process it is where the body keeps the score. Like, oh, like, man. You know, it just holds on to it, and that's where you see those things kind of manifesting. So resistance is what creates the pain. Like you trying to push it away or trying to cover it up is basically is more energy used, more, you burning more energy, you getting more fatigued trying to avoid that than just to go through it. And you know, that's where a lot of um, Chinese medicine, they would say that they say be like water flow. Mm -hmm. And the flow is allowing you to go through the object mm -hmm. um, and even learn ways to go around it. Um, and in the body where it gets stagnant is where it creates the physical pain and injury. And I, I have to say like when you said the body remembers, mm -hmm. like got a human score, uh, many of you out there, you will go through an experience probably, and you'll go, well, everything was going fine in my relationship, and then something happened with this, and all of a sudden, I can't go in through with that. I don't know why this happened. So you're saying, like, um, their brain, their body has memory mm -hmm. within their cells, within their nervous system, and so when it got triggered, it remember that old pattern that occurred to them in the body, so it could be physical trauma or sexual trauma or something or like that. Or traumatic birth trauma. Ooh. Like, you can... This is another training I want to I want to get more about uh, or learn Ooh. more about is how to access with brain spotting um, more preverbal years. Yeah. Because um, these trauma that's they're tucked away that deep brain is subconscious. We don't have access to it. We live in our front brain, where our logic is, uh. and so we get thrown back here in our fear center when we get triggered by those things. But the thing getting triggered in the deep brain. So that's why sometimes people may I was in therapy and remembered something I never. Had remember for or yeah. uh, like when the Penn State thing happened with um, people getting molested as younger people a lot of other that had not remembered that before remember. remembered it it got triggered so it's really common when some of these things happen that maybe you remember stuff that got triggered enough that you then remembered it um, but that our brain our bodies are designed to heal themselves um, and so your brain is the most powerful protective thing you have going for you um, but it, it's just important to help it. When you say like <laughs> the brain out. protecting itself, it's because like like it knows that that amount of information that could be like you said, if it mm -hmm. was you had to pack it away because if it was your body too much at the time, for you cannot to you cannot process it all. Yeah. So it knows when to store it in the body because it knows it could overwhelm you. And so when you start to get therapy like eye right, movement, then well, remember what's in their brain is in the body. Oh yeah. It's all one big nervous system. And then crazy, like when you just said like when the eyes come off the brain, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's think about it guys, if you're an embryo or like you're you're getting you're forming from an embryo and you guys and your eyeballs come off your brain, it's like perfect maps. You know, mm -hmm. like your eyes are perfect maps of your brain and um, 
I was reading a book about um, facial diagnosis, and I, I go to certified acupuncture, do a lot of Chinese medicine, and they talk about in the eyes, they always say look for certain patterns in bloodshot and specks around the eyes mm -hmm. because they'll tell you what part of the brain or what part of the brain has had injury to it. Mm -hmm. They literally would say when people have cerebral hemorrhages mm -hmm. and stuff like that, they'll have certain parts on their eyes. And I was like, really? And they go, yeah. And they even like will say something like if the inside of your eyes have bloodshot veins, mm -hmm. they have blood sugar issues because it's associated with the part of the brain that goes to the spleen and pancreas. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Like, <laughs> yeah, we're nerds. Anyway. Um, well, your body's natural scanning ability, like we naturally have the ability to like scan our body and know what it needs. We have to tap into it and pay attention to it. And so that's what brain spotting helps you do. It taps into that natural ability of you being able to scan because when you're in a brain spotting session, it's more of, I mean, you know, you've experienced it. It's what's coming up for you right now. Do you feel like you're holding that in your body? Do you notice that anywhere? Oh. Because think about when you're talking like, most everybody, they name very quickly, yep, it's my heart starts beating or my throat starts feeling like it's going to close up, things like that. Um, paying attention to those things and that's where that's where you find the spot because it, I mean, you can give some feedback on what it feels like when you All find time. the spot. When you find, like you literally get to a point where she would have me follow object and I would get to a certain spot and all of a sudden I would get something well up in my chest and my throat like I was going to kick like I was about to start crying and I was like like in and it's what? so precise where people I have clients so like no move it that way just a little bit go down just okay there it is so what's going on in the brain represents what's going on in the body so now it that is going on it's, it, always, it is going on it is going on in the body because when she did that for me Many of the memories I had, guys, went to this area and I felt the pressure built right here. Mm -hmm. And I had a surgery about two years ago, and um, the stomach and acupuncture in Chinese medicine has to do with worry. And um, they said that I had a ruptured ulcer. But when I got to this one spot, for three days I had just dreams. And, and I knew it was having to separating to let go of different things, mm -hmm. but I felt a small presence right here continuously. And so I would pray and think, and I was flushing but um <laughs> my friends knew after the sessions i was like i think i need some time to myself <laughs> but um when you find a spot for that individual when they look into that direction do you as a practitioner you know you know they're in fight or flight you know mm -hmm. you're very sensitive i can tell energetically and i'm saying when you see it you, do you almost know mm -hmm. like right when that you're like that's that's not like you said it you're like that's wait wait do you feel inside internally like when you know they hit that mm, area? yes and i i would never tell a client because there's times where i feel like maybe it's on this side and they're like no I'm back over here okay. so you the client is the lead that's mm -hmm. one reason i really like this therapy is because it helps clients um i always tell a client like you're the expert in the room that's good. you know more about you than i do that's good. i have some skills yeah. that i can help but you're going to be the expert and so the, and that brain our brain spotting really facilitates that um it, some clients have never learned how to pay attention to their body but when you're sitting in the room with a therapist like what do you tell me what are you feeling what do you notice and sometimes they can't notice anything and that's okay too so but we can find the spot and start using it so it helps them to start paying attention more to their their stuff um so good in their body and it gives them some people have so much power taken away and control in their lives and different things and it's they are telling me that i always say okay just guide me you know and that is a big part of it but i think also some people may have had their whole lives um you know when they have feelings someone's feelings are bigger than theirs someone tells them not to feel it's okay rub some dirt on it you're fine or we don't do that. Um, that those are those messages, things that lay things in place for you, those patterns. And so, um, having the space when you're with a therapist, no matter what kind of therapy you're doing, um, but especially with the brain spotting, is if someone has big feelings, I'm going to say, "Can you stand it?" If they get feedback on it. Their feelings. You have someone to share space for the ability for you to feel angry, hurt, the, the pain that, all the things that you, we ignore all the time, we try to shove down. There's a space for someone that is encouraging you to, to feel that and experience it. And there's not going to be any judgment. Nothing's going to be wrong for you. 
I, I hear some of the, you know, some really out there that people would normally be like, I feel so shameful that I had that thought, but I'm like, oh, that, that's pretty normal. Like, that would be a normal response, but the space to say those things and to feel those things, because that's another big part of trauma is when we experienced the trauma the first time we were in the trauma, we were in the situation mm -hmm. of chaotic, whatever was going on. When we are processing them, you're in a safe place, mm -hmm. and, and you're in that place that allows you to kind of, you're not getting re-traumatized, but you're, you're visiting and processing and integrating that, but wow. your body is in a more calm, relaxed state. And so that's part of being able to, you learn the new memory. Like if sometimes I'll tell clients they, they felt really big for a minute and like emotionally and then it calmed back down. And I'm like, you just created a new pattern. Your, your brain now knows you have the opportunity and the ability to experience a big pain, mm -hmm. but also calm yourself down again in, you know, in one setting. And well, so that is really good for them to have that that power to do that okay guys we're gonna cut that part there and put on the next video because this is so good we're gonna do another video <laughs>